that's actually true. Uh, originally, we had our CEO and founder scheduled to present. Kaidi uh, Rusalef is her name. And she's truly one of the most inspiring people that I've met in my life. And she was, that is not my presentation. Um, she, she, she was going to talk about her experience being born in a small town in Estonia while it was still occupied by the Soviet Union and the role she played in rebuilding the country after it regained its independence. As I was born in the US after the fall of the Iron Curtain, that's really a subject that I have a very limited amount of experience with. So instead, I'm going to talk about something I do know a little bit more, which is Thunderbeam, the company that Kadia has helped build. And as soon as my slides make it up here, I will get started. But real quickly about myself, uh, I joined Thunderbeam about four years ago as a business analyst. And one of the things that I was doing was, here we go, I was annotating data sets manually. I didn't know anything about machine learning. I didn't know anything about data science. I had just graduated uh, from a business and economics school. And as I was man annotating these data sets, after a few hundred uh, examples, I thought to myself, there's really got to be a better way to do this. Uh, so I took the effort upon myself. I think during the first presentation here, they were talking about the great wealth of online resources you have to teach yourself these things. So I learned about statistics. I learned about calculus. I learned about coding. I learned about machine learning and started to apply these things to the Thunderbeam data platform. And I'll talk in a little more detail about how we use data science and machine learning on our platform and also how we use uh, blockchain on our platform. So every company is trying to solve a problem. And the problem we're trying to solve is twofold. First, investors find it difficult to access quality deals that aren't in their immediate region unless you're a very large VC. If you're an angel investor, you're very restricted to investing in startups that are quite close by simply because you don't have the network in other regions to hear about these deals as they become available. Entrepreneurs and startups have a very difficult time raising capitals from investors outside of their immediate area for the same reason. The investors don't have access to those deals, then the startups don't have access to that capital. In this day and age, that's not really how things should be done because innovation is happening all over the world. I think Thomas was up here with his slides saying that the really awesome companies are scattered like dust, and that's actually the truth. And investors are all over the world as well, but there's not a one-to-one -one match. So in order to fund those interesting startups, you need to build a platform that connects them with those investors globally. So Thunderbeam has built a platform that provides a solution for that. Uh, we've built a platform that gives investors, no matter where they are in the world, access to these same quality deals. And for the startups, we give them access to that capital from investors all over the globe. And on a, a more interesting note, we've introduced a liquid secondary market for startup investing secured by blockchain. So our solution has three components to it. And we like to say if Bloomberg, AngelList, and NASDAQ had a baby, it would look a lot like Thunderbeam. And the three kind of foundations, the three pillars of Thunderbeam are our data intelligence platform, which is what I'm working on myself, our fundraising platform, where companies can come and raise an capital from investors, and our trading platform, where investors can trade their startup investments amongst themselves. And I'll dig into each of these in a little bit more detail. If I can get this to go before that's two. There we go, only two that time. So first, the data. This is something that's very near and dear to my heart, something that I've been working on for four years and something that I feel very, very passionate about. Um, I know this is the third presentation in a row from a data guy, and I apologize if that's not your area of interest, but hopefully by the end of this, you guys are interested in it as I am. So there's different levels of data that we work with. First, you have raw facts. Now, our data platform consists of information on about 150,000 startups globally and 20,000 investors. And we've sourced all of this information from publicly available sources to try and map out as accurate a picture of the startup landscape as possible globally. So you start with raw facts. This is things like, what's the company's name? What's their homepage? Where are they located? When were they founded? Then you collect all this different information from different sources. In some cases, you might have conflicting data, so you need to clean up this data and structure it and organize it and prioritize it so that you know what you have in your database is likely to be correct. Once you have this cleaned up data, you can actually start to benchmark companies. And this is something that uh, we make available on our platform, the ability to take startups 
around the globe and compare them to each other to get a good understanding of not what does the regional landscape look like, but what does the global landscape look like. Then we can aggregate that data and publish it in the form of reports. So we do regular industry-based funding reports, uh, regional-based funding reports. We launched an ICO report rather recently and make this information available to the investors on our platform. And then once we've gathered all this data, we can actually apply our own level of statistical analysis and machine learning on top of it to try and draw out additional insights so that the investors on our platform have all the information they need at their fingertips uh, in order to make informed investment decisions. So Thomas was up here saying they've put together some predictive analytics to benchmark how likely is that the companies will be successful. Uh, we've done something very similar on our platform to make that available for anybody. Now they've been doing it for a decade, we've only been doing it for a few years, but the idea stays the same, that you can use this machine learning techniques and data science to actually predict how likely startups are to be successful. Uh, and the first thing that you need to do is actually gather this data. Uh, the internet is a fantastic resource for that. I'm sure several of you very frequently go to TechCrunch or Crunchbase or Finsmes or any of these sources where you might find this data if you're interested in startups. But it would be really useful if you had all that information in one place. So we're doing that for you. We're scanning publicly available sources. We're connected to social media. We're connected to media outlets, public filings. Anywhere where this information might be published, we're scanning the web and looking for it. Uh, we collect all of this raw textual information and store it in our database and run all of it through natural language processing algorithms called grammars. And these grammars are algorithms that have been trained to look for specific events that are significant to how companies develop. So funding rounds is a really, uh, a really big one here. Uh, when a company raises funding, that's a significant event. Uh, acquisitions, IPOs, who are the founders at the company, who are the investors at the company, what is it that the companies are doing? This is all information that you can find online, but if you want to understand it at a global scale, you're going to have to spend an awful lot of time scrolling through the web to find it. So once we've picked up on this information, we can take a funding round as an example. We have to match it to the appropriate entities in our database. So if we have a funding round, we have to know who raised money. We have to connect them with the right entity in our database. Who did they raise money from? We have to find the appropriate investors. How much did they raise? What was the series? And then we parse all this information automatically. And then we run everything that we're collecting through an anomaly detection system. And there's a very specific reason we do this. Uh, when we launched the pipeline, we were really excited. We went from having about $400 billion worth of funding information over the last 10 years to having $22 trillion worth of information, um, which sounded great. We were really excited. The pipeline is working. We're getting all of the information. But we did a little bit of digging, and it turned out that about 99% of this information was coming from one funding round. Somebody had raised $21 trillion which sounded a little bit suspicious. So we dug into it a little bit, and turns out that we had picked up on an article about the US national debt and associated it with a startup. And as far as the machines were concerned, this company had just raised the largest funding round in the history of mankind. Uh, they don't have any idea what an appropriate size funding round is. So we realized we needed to make improvements in this area, so now everything is run through statistically benchmarked anomaly detection to make sure when we have an event on our platform, we're statistically confident that it actually happened and we're not reporting on the uh, US national debt again. Then we cluster all the information we have about specific events. So if we have 10 articles about a funding round and somebody tweets about it and somebody writes a Facebook post about it, we don't want to process that 12 different times. We actually only want to process that, so that once. So we cluster this all together into one event. And because the machines still don't do an entirely perfect job yet, they're getting better, but they still need a little human oversight, we present everything in a very nice panel for our data analysts so that they can manually verify or adjust this information or discard information in case it's not correct so that we can be very confident the information we have on our website that we're giving to the investors on our platform is as accurate as possible. Two, three. There we go. Oh, no, no we're back. Okay, and this is kind of what it looks like behind the scenes. First, we collect this raw text here and we un try and understand what events do they pertain to, and then we run them through these grammars to try and extract the entities from them. So this is just kind of illustrating behind the scenes how do we actually process this information. So the second technology I'm going to talk about today is blockchain, and this is something that's kind of hit the scenes and everybody's kind of fallen in love with it. Uh, blockchain is the solution to everybody's problems, but there's something unique about it. It's been almost universally adopted, but almost nobody knows how it actually works. 
Um, at a technical level, blockchain is actually a very complicated piece of technology, but that's not really what makes it unique. The fact that it's a distributed ledger is great, but we have relational databases, we have Excel. What does this ledger do? OK, it's distributed, but why does that actually matter? So we saw the kind of rise and subsequent fall of ICOs relatively recently, uh, the crash in Bitcoin price. All of these were utilizing blockchain technology. But even with these drops, blockchain is still persisting. And the reason is because blockchain adds a new element of trust. It redefines what does it mean to trust an entity. If they're using blockchain, you know that this person is not entirely in control of the information that's available, but this is being recorded and verified by the entire ledger, the entire network. So that's really the unique aspect of it, and it's what's the value that Thunderbeam sees in using blockchain for our platform. So how do we actually use it? When a company comes to our platform, oh man, there we go. When a company comes to our platform looking to raise money, uh, and they successfully do so, it really doesn't look too different from your traditional fundraising platform. You have traditionally lead investor who brings on some of his network, some of our network, and they pool their money together, put it into an SPV, and they invest in the company. The unique aspect we add is each of those backers will receive digital tokens in proportion to the amount they contributed to the overall round. And it's these digital tokens that really allow us to utilize the blockchain to its full potential in this use case. Because these digital tokens represent the underlying asset that was raised. So if it was an equity round, these digital tokens will represent equity. It could be a bond. It could be a fund. It could be a convertible note. And once you have these digital tokens, you can trade them amongst other investors on the platform. So if you invested a significant amount, but now you want to free up some capital for another investment, you can sell off some of your tokens. If you missed out on the primary round, but it seems like it's a really interesting and promising company, but they're not going to raise for another few years, you can buy these tokens on the secondary market. And even we can list existing assets so that if you've raised off the platform, but you want to give your investors that li liquidity option, you can bring those assets to our platform, and we'll tokenize those assets. But what does this have to do with blockchain? These digital tokens are actually a technology called colored coins, meaning they're just metadata that we embed on top of the blockchain. And this metadata represents what fundraising event was this token issued in, what were the terms of the deal, what's the underlying asset here. And since this metadata is just embedded on top of Bitcoin transactions, you can secure this with the blockchain. So every time somebody makes a trade on our platform, that's actually recorded and verified on our platform. And this is what our trading floor looks like. You have people who want to sell tokens, and you have people who want to buy tokens. We don't play any part in manipulating the price, but we just give them the option to set the price that they want. And we can also give them access to historical historical, there we go, price data for those tokens as well. And this is where the data also plays a bit of a component. You can see that there was a spike there in March. I don't know if I have a pointer here. Uh, I do, but you can't really see it. In March of 2017, and this is actually a round that we raised on our own platform. And we raised an additional follow-up round uh, from a strategic investor. And as soon as we announced that, the token price of our, that syndicate went up significantly. That was a reaction to real-world events that we had published on our data platform. And it leveled out eventually after that, but the price stayed above where it had initially been at before that event. And in this case, that means you can make returns on your investments before, without having to wait five or 10 years for the companies to either make a successful exit or eventually uh, be acquired, go public, or in some cases, even shut down, in which case you don't get anything back on your investment for the most part. So the way it works behind the scenes is we have two interested parties, somebody who has tokens, somebody who wants tokens. They meet on the platform. They agree on the price. The buyer will transfer the funds. And then that trade will be sent to the blockchain. We'll get a signal that that's been recorded on the blockchain. We'll verify that. And then we'll trade the tokens. And now the buyer has the tokens. The seller has the money. And the proof of that is recorded on the blockchain for anybody who wants to go and see it and verify it. So we don't rely on any sort of ledger that we're keeping internally at Thunderbeam. Now, the real world effect this has is more or less a stock market for early stage companies. 
except we're not operating with the same restrictions because we can use blockchain. And a traditional stock market looks a little bit like this, where you have an investor who wants to buy some stocks. He has to go through his bank, who has to issue a notice to a broker, who has to go to the exchange. The transaction has to clear the settling department, and then that has to be registered with the depository. And this can be a very time-consuming process. It can be an expensive process, and it's only available during working hours. And with that many middlemen, there's so many things that could go wrong. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight parties. Where That's the eight places where it could go wrong. So using blockchain technology, you can eliminate a lot of those players. In this case, the investor can come straight to the exchange, in this case, Thunderbeam, and interact with the investors directly on our platform. There's no need for a settling department. There's no need for a depository, because we record and verify this all on the blockchain. Um, and to wrap up real quick, uh, we launched our fundraising platform in 2016. Um, and since then, we've had more than 6 million euros raised on the platform. And we've had more than 2,000 trades with a value of over 700,000 euros conducted on the platform. And these range from trades of a few thousand euro to trades of 40,000 euros. So that represents a significant shift in somebody's interest in a startup. And globally, we have a network of investors from 109 different countries really opening up those capital markets to early stage companies that otherwise wouldn't have, wouldn't have those opportunities. So that's all from me today. If you guys have any questions, I'm happy to answer them now. If you want to ask me later, uh, I will be here all day today. But you can also connect with me on Twitter or email, and I'd be happy to answer your questions online as well. Thank you very much. Nicholas Van Dres, thank you so much.